and good morning, white positive people. March 1st, Monday. Heading into Los Angeles. Still up in the mountainous areas. Blue Ninja, fellow white apostle for white and western well-being. At your service, alongside each and every one of you, fighting the battle each and every day. The battle that we are in to save our kind. All my best to everyone. Wilhelmina Bayer, my dearly beloved, Matthew Bayer. Donning armor, hard acrobat, watch rider, Brad C. And not to forget Raymond Foster. Shauna Shaw, No White Kill Clips, Nancy Drew, Vivian Fire, doing what I like to do. DHMC, Robert, David. Got a comment from someone called something like white people love my playlist. <laughs> That's a pretty cool name. White people love my playlists. I'm sure they do because it's probably all white positive stuff. Welcome aboard the blue truck with the blue ninja for white well-being. User name. White people love my playlist. That's pretty cool. Hail to you, my brother or sister, as you said. I want to highlight a special someone I did not forget. Of course, I can't name everybody. All my best to every single person out there that I don't name. Every one of us are important to white well-being, of course. One person I really want to highlight here, Irish Ice. Irish Ice. Up in the Hyperborean Canada lands. Irish Ice is on fire lately. I dearly love our brother Irish Ice. He is on fire. Doing things exactly the way I think things need to be done. That Western bio spirit is fully alive and well in Irish Ice. I can attest to that 100% with certainty. No doubt about it, there's no lack of the Western greatness of spirit in Irish ice. No doubt his spirit is shining through. That's the same spirit we all have within. The fire is still alight. Even though we have been trampled on and pushed around and slapped in the face, the fire is still alight. Now why am I highlighting Irish Ice? Well, obviously he's a great man. A great Western man. Standing up and answering the call as manly as a man can be. Just like Raymond Foster, just like so many of us all the women too. But I want to highlight Irish Ice because I've been watching some of his videos recently and he keeps them short but man he makes them powerful. Just like loaded concentrated dynamite. <laughs> 20 seconds of an Irish Ice video is worth, is invaluable. 
He gets straight to it and it's just absolutely pure power. <laughs> watched recently one where he um, showed some of Jason Kuna talking on uh, the Going Free stream about uh, Irish Ice's comments and, um, and then I watched one where he showed a clip of Mike Tyson talking about race asking is Mike Tyson anti-white the stuff is discussed a lot of times it's just you know it's not publicized as much then I watched a couple other short videos of Irish Ice One, where he just candidly was on camera himself and said, hey, he was talking about having an all white, all white countries in the West. And he was saying, this is what we need, folks. This is what we should want. And he was, reprimanding appropriately so rightfully so the people who praise and celebrate so-called multicultural multiracial societies he was saying forget that all you people who are talking about that are fools what we need are homogenous white societies anyone who doesn't think that'll be good for western people are sorely misguided sadly so he said let's get realistic folks let's get realistic we need western societies multiracialism doesn't work if it's not obvious by now then people are never going to realize it I want to highlight Irish Ice for bringing that up, which is a, such an excellent point. I'm going to emphasize that here with my own two bits. So that's the subject of the conversation today. Homogeneity in the West, which has been a long lost phenomenon. So much so that most people have forgotten what it even looks like. So, people have gotten used to multiracial societies in the West. Thinking that that's just the norm. Because it's been the case for so long. Well, it's not really the norm. And we can see we can see that it doesn't work now we need to understand as we all are aware no doubt as many of us have mentioned before the purpose the sole purpose of multiracialism is to attack white people is to erase white culture and erase white people. That is the only purpose of So we need to understand that and remind ourselves of that foremost. Sorry folks, I didn't even realize I lost you there. <laughs> Going through some bumpy lands up in these hills. My apologies. <laughs> we are back. Until I'm fired up, not even watching the camera. Looks like we're still going. Um, Angela's National Forest is my location, in case anyone is wondering. Um, gotta watch my speed. 
speed a little bit, just saw a truck, got pulled over, getting a ticket. Big ticket. <laughs> Gotta go slow down these hills. Um, so, foremost, we need to understand, all of us need to always remember, the multiracialism only has one purpose. That is to harm and attack white people, white culture. That is the only purpose of that. The purpose is to strip whites of community, to strip whites of homogeneity. That is why it is there, to take away our homogeneity. It's not there for anything that they say it's here for. It's not here to give non-whites opportunities. It's not here for so-called equality or anything else in the anti-white narrative. One purpose, one purpose only, to strip away homogeneity from whites, to weaken us, to harm us, to ultimately erase us. That's it. So, always need to remember that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is a perfect thing that Irish Ice brought up, because I just saw something uh, at a truck stop I was at, which is all too common. Textbook example. I should have taken a picture of it. But uh, I noticed in this truck stop, they'll, you know, they have toys in there, dolls, souvenirs, etc. This particular one Another truck getting a ticket. Wow, cops are out today. Better watch myself here. <laughs> California Highway Patrol, they're known to be a little strict sometimes. Especially in these hilly sections, they have very low speed limits. Lots of trucks uh, violate that, including myself. <laughs> so, uh, it's easy to violate those speed limits when the speed limit is like 40 miles an hour. Um, anyhow, what did I see in this truck stop? Well, I went in there, I saw some dolls, like a lot of these truck stops have, little dolls. For, uh, you know, people that want to buy their kids dolls, toys, truckers, etc. Now, this was textbook. It's not always this blatant. Um, it's, it's usually the multiracialism is usually there. The white erasure is usually there. The anti-whiteism is usually there. And the toys, if you look for it, sometimes it's very, very, very in your face. Sometimes it's textbook. Now this was a textbook example. This, these were Barbie dolls. You know, good old fashioned Barbie dolls. The only thing not old fashioned about them was over half of them were non-white. Now this Barbie doll display, regular looking size Barbie dolls. Now we know Barbie Mattel is completely anti-white. They've made that clear. This display of Barbie dolls was absolutely textbook anti-whiteism. There were on the display three dolls, three Barbie dolls. One was white with blonde hair. Now that used to be the classic Barbie doll model. That was how Barbie was originally started. Barbie was known in general as a white girl doll. Uh, 
white with blonde hair, white with maybe some different color hairs, but you know, the classic Barbie is white with blonde hair. That's what made Barbie Barbie. Now, there was one of them that was white with blonde hair, that would be the classic one. Then there were two more on this display, a total of three. The other two were non-white. There was one that was uh, kind of a brownish, <laughs> you know, kind of a brownish, kind of a light brownish skin tone. And, um, you know, meant to be probably a few different races possibly. Could be Latino, you could interpret it to be Asian. It was kind of um, kind of non-specific like that. Just that general light brown tone. You could interpret that to be a lot of different things. That, that would kind of cover you know, the Latinos, the Asians, um, etc. Then there was, of course, a dark non-white, a black dog, or the Africans. So this this was just a display up front there, three dolls, two out of the three were non-white. So right there, that's almost 70% non-white in the toys that kids, parents are seeing. Just front center, nicely displayed, totally set up that way. So that is a classic example of white erasure. non-homogeneity in our Western country. Need a little coffee there to keep the brain in gear. <laughs> anyway, now, I just looked at it and shook my head. Now, when we see that stuff, remember, How should you interpret that? In my opinion, that should be taken as a slap in the face. That should be taken as a shove. That should be taken as getting pushed around and attacked and erased as a white person. So make no mistake about it, when you see stuff like that, when you see two out of three majority non-white dolls, non-white toys for our kids, Make no mistake about it, that is an attack, full-blown attack on you and me as white people. That is the only reason it's there, is to attack us. So we should interpret it as such, as, as, as an offense, as an attack, as intended harm toward us and our people. That is how we should take that, in my opinion. That is how I take that. When I see that, I take it as a slap in the face. I take it as an affront. I take it as being pushed around, disrespected, etc. That's because that's what it is. It's disrespect. It's diminution, it's degradation, it's white erasure. When we see stuff like that, non-white toys. So I feel very offended when I see that stuff, as we all should, as conscious white people.
So we need to decode these things. That's what it means, that's what it is. Now, That's the way we need to feel about it. Every time we see that stuff, every time I see that stuff, I am offended, I am upset. I feel as though I'm being slapped in the face and punched and kicked in the gut because that is exactly what is happening, reality. And again, we always need to remember who is the target? White man and woman and child, it is you, it is us. It is we who are the targets as whites. It's why that stuff is there, it is for white people. It is for the degradation and erasure of white people. That is the only, only purpose, remember that. Now on to Irish Ice's comments about how we need homogenous societies. So that then leads to obviously what we need, what is healthy. What is unhealthy is the multiracialism being represented in actual people, in toys, etc. It is erasing our culture, it is erasing our people as whites. That is very harmful to us. Now, so therefore, obviously the opposite is healthy. Having homogenous white societies cultures in the West that is obviously healthy. So we need to set our focus on that. We need to be trying to achieve that, I think. We need to understand that that is healthy, that is a good thing to have homogenous societies for us white people. We need to be trying to achieve that. We need to, as Irish I said, be realistically trying to achieve that reality. understand that we've all been programmed to think that multiracialism is the norm in the West. And that's a big mean pathogen. Even in myself, I notice that when I go to Belarus and it's homogeneously white, I kind of feel like, you know, where's the diversity? We've, we've been programmed to think that's the norm. But in reality, when you have so-called, when you have multiracialism, there is nothing there that is lack of culture, that is lack of homogeneity. It is not truly, as we know, multicultural. It is absent and void of culture at all, any culture. What multiracialism really does, or so-called multiculturalism, is it erases cultures, it does not add cultures. It is not many cultures coexisting together. That phenomenon does not work in reality. All that results from that is the erasure. It erases cultures, it removes cultures. It does not add anything. And what is the primary target to erase? It is white culture, Western culture. Now, there, there is no culture whatsoever in a multiracial society. I would say there's not even non-white cultures. Everything gets muddled together and there is nothing. So, this is a, a multiracial society is a society that is void of any and all cultures at all. Now, they will sacrifice other cultures in order to erase white cultures. Other cultures being damaged, non-white cultures being damaged, comes as collateral damage in 
order to achieve the primary goal of racing white culture by the anti-whites. Now, they will try to promote non-white cultures, and, and if they can achieve non-white culture, then, then they'll do that. If they have to sacrifice non-white culture, then they'll do that too. It doesn't matter. Sometimes they do have non-white culture here and there. They have more than we have, that's for sure. But if they don't have culture, it doesn't matter. They have created in the West almost cultureless societies by mixing so many together. Again, they will they will sacrifice anything, any amount of collateral damage for the goal of achieving white erasure of people and culture. So remember, that is the result of multiracialism, is lack of any homogeneity, lack of any culture whatsoever. Again, the culture that they're trying to erase is white and Western culture. If there is non-white culture, they don't care. They will let that carry on. If it just so happens to be that way. If it happens to be that there is non-white culture that gets erased alongside white culture, they'll do that as well. They do not care whether the non-white cultures exist or not. But they do care whether the white culture exists. They do not want it around. been to a homogenous uh, culture, especially a homogenous white culture, knows that it's there's it's very beneficial. You're a part of a group, you're a part of, you have many things in common, strengthens a people tremendously. That has been what, that's what's been taken away from us and that's what we need to get back. Now, so we should be striving for that. White homogenous societies, white homogenous cultures, Western homogeneity. Now believe you me, if we had homogenous culture, you would feel the difference. You would instantly feel much, much safer. You would instantly feel a sense of fitting in, a sense of community, a sense of belonging. You would instantly feel that. You would feel how different it is. You would feel like you belong to something. You would, you would have customs, traditions, practices. You would instantly feel the stark difference between that and the multiracial society we have now. Now in my experience, as you all know, I've been to Belarus a few times and some other countries in Eastern Europe that are basically all white. And I feel like I fit in there more than over here. Even though I do not speak the language, which is a big deal. It's a big deal to not speak the language. Um, they, you know, it's a dead giveaway that I'm a foreign. It's a big part of culture over there, language. Communication, you can't really communicate without the language. That's, that's a big part of, that's obviously the key element with culture is communication. It's, that's the foundation of everything. So even missing something as key as that, as language, even so, I still feel like I fit in there to a, to a significant degree just because of my race, because I am white like they are. I share significant similarity in DNA and blood and genetics uh, by way of race. So just having that common bio spirit 
makes us similar people. Even without language, even with differences, differences in customs, traditions, language, even so, we are still similar people because we are white, we are of the same race, we have that similarity in genetics, much more so than people of different races have. So that similarity in race goes a long way to overcome other differences. You will feel that sense of community amongst the same race, even with differences as significant as language. So, believe you me, I, if anyone has been a part of a white homogenous culture, Eastern Europe, one of the last places you can find it. Belarus, Ukraine, some of those countries over there, Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia, the Eastern European countries, Russia, you can find it. Some other countries of Eastern Europe, you can find it. Maybe Central Europe. I highly recommend it for everybody. You just feel it. You just feel like, wow, I, I fit in here. I fit in just because I'm white. That is what every people needs to survive and function properly. Every race needs that to really function at its best. I've seen non-white homogeneity, plenty of that in non-white countries. And I've also experienced much more rarely white homogeny. And then plenty of multiracialism, which is just a disaster, <laughs> as we all know here in the West. So, stark, stark difference. Now, to the final point here. The final point is that, again, we think it is not the norm. We think it is, we have been programmed for so long in our Western countries to think that it is the norm to be multiracial, that we feel like there's something missing if we're in a homogenous society, if we're in an all-white area or something like that. We've been conditioned through experience. There's lots of white people that will that think it's a virtue to be multiracial, to be tolerant of other races. No, that's actually villain, villainy. It's not virtuous, it's villainous. But there are people, the anti-whitists and the mean pathogens have gotten in so deep with people that when they are around all white societies, they might feel like there's something wrong. Because that's what the anti-whites would have us believe. That, that is wrong somehow. According to anti-whiteism, it's okay for non-whites to have homogenous cultures, but it's not okay for whites to have it. So whites have internalized this. There must be something wrong if they're in an all-white society. Now, that is nothing but mean pathogens. That is nothing but anti-whiteism. Implanted in everybody's psyche. So we need to understand that, first of all. Secondly, we need to understand that there are places that do have basically homogenous white sites. That, that stuff does exist. So, it's okay to have that. It's normal and it's beneficial to have that. Now, my recent trip, my experience in Belarus, attests to that. When I was over 
over in Belarus visiting my daughter, wife, and her family. Um, when 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 we were watching TV and stuff, guess what was on TV over there? Basically, all white people. Everything was white. It was all white people. Almost entirely white. There was a few non-whites here and there you might see on a commercial. Getting carried away, almost missing my exit. <laughs> um, forgetting which way I'm going since it's been a little while here. Getting back into the LA area. Got to get my my LA driving back. <laughs> um, so Basically, in Belarus, you look at these commercials on TV and all the TV programs, and it's all white people. Talk shows. It'll be a white host, it'll be an all white audience. Uh, kid shows, all white characters, all white cartoons, all positive, all uplifting, all healthy. Just whites. That's just what you see on TV and all the different programs. Cooking shows, uh, dramas, soap operas, whatever it may be. It's basically all whites. With a very few exceptions. See some non-whites thrown into a commercial here and there. Pretty rare overall. I sure hope that they're not trying to creep in multiracialism over there, who knows? It's still mostly white over there. And you see what that looks like. Seeing commercials, seeing advertisements, seeing things in stores, seeing billboards, seeing everything in society with basically all white people. For all ages. This is, this has become a foreign concept to whites in the West, seeing stuff in society that's just all white. We've been conditioned to question that. So I'm here to tell you, to, to reinforce and remind us that all white societies do exist. They are okay, they are more than okay, they are beneficial. We should have. So when we see something that's all white, as rare as it is in the West, we need to think that that is a good thing. We need to embrace that. We need to applaud that. We need to celebrate that. We need to seek that. We need to strive for that. recognize that as a good and healthy thing for, for white people, for the benefit of our kind. So I'll leave it at that. I just realized I might have to do some navigation here <laughs> to uh, get myself to where I need to go. Um, So I think I'm going to be Vegas bound shortly, uh, maybe possibly tonight. 
probably be uh, maybe making a midnight video. But for now, <laughs> the sun is shining bright. Hope you all have a good day. And remember that fire is still alight. Let our goal be, just like the great Irish Ice champion warrior brother said, to achieve white homogeneity once again in the West. Let that be our goal. May it be done with the Lord at our sides. So all my best everyone. We'll take it out here with a song which I think is apropos by one of my favorite 80s bands, you can tell. Phil Collins, Genesis, loved that as a kid. So, very apropos to, uh, to white well-being, Western kind in here. Our plight as Westerners, as the white race. So we'll take it out here, and I'll say that I love you all as usual. All my warmest and best. Keep that Western fire, that Western spirit alight and alive. God bless each and every one. Stay strong, stay white positive. Let us keep going free even though we are in the land of confusion. We can see clearly and we will bring about peace and prosperity for white people in the West once again let's keep going free everybody land of confusion in the west surely it is
tents on the side of the highway tents on the side of this off-ramp homeless people living in tents and that's not even a lot compared to some areas it's much more dense than that there's another one This is the state of the West, folks. People living in tents all over the place, homeless like crazy. We're gonna change that one step at a time. I love y'all, God bless, and I will see you soon.